Hey, this is Paul, Reefkeeper 2, and I'm here with my three-year anniversary update of my reef tank. A lot's happened in the past year, new lights, new equipment, so I got a lot to talk about, and I'll probably start in the basement. Okay, here we are in the basement, and the reason I brought you down here is because I had to buy a new calcium reactor. And the reason for that is I couldn't keep up with the alkalinity demand of all those corals up there, upstairs. So, I searched and searched for the right calcium reactor. I thought it would be an easy process, but it wasn't. I was looking for a large reactor, but one that didn't have a large electricity suck and pump attached to it. So, it was a lot easier said than done. But I finally settled on and bought the new Tunzi model. I never had a Tunzi calcium reactor before. I really didn't have any problems with buying anything Tunzi because they're pretty... Um, quality products and as you notice this calcium reactor is in the sump when I bought it I didn't know that the recommendation was to run this calcium reactor in the sump but if you can take a look if you look at that plumbing this is soft not exactly built for high pressure now you can run it outside of your sump, but they recommend that you run it on the inside of your sump. And um, looking at the fittings and stuff, I can see why. So at first I wasn't too happy, but I rearranged everything, I put it in the sump, and now I am happy. It turns out it's nice, it's out of the way, I don't have to think of leaks, and um, I'm quite pleased that I bought it. It's self-priming. The only problem that I have is that if the power goes out, you know, the water level inside the reactor drops down to where it is in the sump. And even though it's self-priming, it can't prime itself if that, if that whole reactor is, is down that far. So in the few times when we have lost power, I've had to come down here and open the top and pour some water in it and start it up again. Um, I can solve that problem if I uh, connect the pump to my um, emergency power supply. But I haven't decided if I want to do that or not. I don't know if I want to take away from uh, the amount of time that that battery can power the, um, the pumps upstairs. So for now, I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, another reason why I picked this calcium reactor is I like things simple. I, I don't um, like things to be too complicated. I mean, I love new technology. I'll try almost anything. But when I was looking at a lot of the uh, reactors, especially some of the newer ones, you know, they had step pumps and, all, and computers and et cetera, et cetera, bells and whistles. And it was just not something I wanted to um, get into. You know, the, the, the more complicated they are, the more, the more easily they break. Or, you know, the computer goes or a chip malfunctions and then, you know, they're messed up. I, um, I like keeping it simple with, with this piece of equipment. And um, as you can see, I don't even monitor the pH with it. The, the, the outlet is empty. When I set it up, I check the, the pH of the um, effluent, which is coming out of there. I built that tower. It's just a, a degasser, homemade, you know, to help bring the pH up a little bit when it comes out of the reactor. Um, and I make sure it's between 6.5 and 6.7, and that's it. I just, I just leave it. And um, I fill it up when it gets low, and it, it gets low pretty quickly. I, I go through a lot of um, a lot of media because the alkalinity demand is huge. So that's my new calcium reactor. Now I'll bring you back upstairs and show you what's new up there. Okay, here we are. We're back upstairs. Um, there have been some changes up here too. I um, replaced my AI Hydra 52 lighting with Radeon G4 Pros about three months ago. Uh, I did that because the AI lights that I had, they were Hydra 52s, um, they could not be upgraded any further. They were original soles that I've had for, I don't know how many years ago, back eight years or something, that um, I had upgraded to Hydras, and then from the Hydra... I'm sorry, to the Vegas, and then from the Vegas to the Hydra 52s, and then I kind of reached a dead end because there are no more upgrades. I couldn't upgrade them to the HDs, 
and um, the HDs would have allowed me to increase the par but keep the, uh, the lights a little bit more on the blue side. So I gave it a lot of thought and looked at different lights and um, decided to go with the, uh, the Radeon G4 Pros. There are still five Vegas on this tank running down the center. The center is, if you can notice, the center of the tank is, all the coils are pretty high towards the surface. So they're adequate to, uh, you know, to light those corals. I will eventually replace those two. I don't like having like two controllers with two different sets of lights, but uh, it's a pretty expensive uh, proposition, so I'm, I'm kind of phasing it in. But these lights are, are really good. I mean, uh, they're running at 75%. The, uh, the color is, is noticeably better. The corals are doing very, very well. The growth rate is, is you know, phenomenal, which, you know, having to add another cal a new calcium reactor or only uh, attests to. Um, <clears throat> so I'm pretty happy with it. The only uh, criticism that I have is that they are, are loud. They're louder than, than the AIs were. And uh, the fans at 75%, I thought it would be um, quieter than, you know, than what I used to have before, but I can, I can hear them pretty well. But uh, it's, nothing, it's nothing terrible. It's not a, a deal breaker or anything. But like I said, it's about the only criticism that I, could ha that I have. So um, let's start taking a, a closer look. I've changed a lot of stuff in the tank. I move things around all the time. If I don't like the way a particular color is at a certain place or if something gets too big and it's time to take it out, then that's what I do. So if something looks like it's kind of new or it's been just put someplace, and that's that's what what's happened. You can see my blood shrimp in there. I had those guys for a while. The fish are all doing well. That meat coral I would love to put on the sand bed, but um, my Lamarck angelfish has an appetite for it. And he'll start pecking at it, so I, I have to leave it there where he doesn't seem to know it's up there, and he leaves it alone. It's really great to have my elegance coral back in the main display. I had to remove it along with some other corals when I had the file fish in here. I put file fish in here to eliminate uh, Aptasia and Mojanos and they did a really good job and then they wiped out every zoanth that I had in the tank. <clears throat> so you might notice a lack of zoanthids. I've started putting some more in here but it's going to take me a while to get it back to the way it was and it took me a while to get those fish out. They weren't easy to catch. but they were pecking on the, uh, the elegance coral too. So I had to move that, the scoli, a bunch of different things down into the basement until I could get them out of the tank. My anemone, I think I've had this anemone for 15 years, maybe longer. Pumps is sucking air. This coral once resided in the very front of the tank. Got too big, I had to move it. I redid this entire corner. That Blue Ridge Coral was about five times larger than the piece that you see and took up this entire corner of the tank if you look at some of the old videos. 
So I took it out, cut it down with a saw, just sawed right through it as you can see. And re aquascaped this entire corner. It opened it up nicely, allowed me to change some things around. I think it looks a lot better. This pink table is so large that it weighs more than the, than the rock it's attached to. Um, it's fallen down a couple of times and I've had to like try to get the rock back in there. I really love the large, the look of the large um, specimens. If I can move back, I think it looks really cool. But I'm going to probably going to have to do something about that table. It's really gigantic. If I try to just cut it back, it'll fall down. And if you can see, the coral above is shading a good portion of it. I'm not quite sure what I should do. I really like the way it looks, but I can't let it get too much larger. That pink lemonade is going to come out in the next week or two. It's really not the place for it. Shading everything below. And I promised it to a friend, so wish me luck getting it out of there. It's not going to be easy. Hawkins at Ganada, one of my favorite corals. I've been slowly changing out some of the sand um, to a coarser grade. I have a problem with um, the circulation in here where the, the pumps can really stir up the sand, especially around the edges of the tank. So I've been slowly like taking out the finer stuff and adding a little coarser grade. Makes a terrible mess, but it'll be worth it when it's all done. The sponges are doing really well. I don't know if you can see, but I'll go back here. I got sponges everywhere. There's yellow ones, there's white ones. I really miss the zoanthids. I don't like the look of bare rock. But in time. There it is. A little late, a month late, but I think it was worth the wait. Thanks for watching.